Hey. All right. <laughs> Friend. Welcome, everybody, to episode seven of Talking Tokens. Debtor, I believe. Debtor, yes. <laughs> um, I am here with Andy um, Vanderbilt, myself being Mike Bradshaw, as always. Um, we Screen's dead. Yes, the screen died. <laughs> So what we're going to do here Lamps is... Lamps running away. That, uh, and we'll get it to come back. In the meantime, let's talk a little bit about what you had going on over the weekend. Ah, my journey into um, Hotel of Madness. Yes. It was A-Sun, Anime Central. Uh, Shauna, I mean, me and Shauna go usually every year. I mean, I don't really follow much in the ways of anime, so I usually just use it as an excuse to get really, really drunk. Anime Central, for those not in the know, is a convention in the Chicago area. Biggest convention, actually. Yeah. It's a very, uh, it's been going for a while now. But it's usually a fun weekend full of drinking, hanging out. I mean, I guess there's anime there, Mm -hmm. from what I'm told, but I, I don't know. Not my realm. You said you kind of felt like you were you were a jock walking around the hall. I, I there yeah. were there were moments walking around where I did kind of feel like I should wear a letterman's jacket with the sleeves ripped off. <laughs> like I think one year I do want to get I want to go as ogre from Revenge of the Nerds and just see if I like scare some people. That's the way to do it. <laughs> I mean, this this just triggers some bad memories. <laughs> but it was no, it was a fun time. Um, as far as it goes. I was really surprised at how much of a presence board games and tabletop games mm-hmm. had there. That actually kind of threw me for a loop. And before we get into the Kickstarter that I actually got the privilege of playing there, and meeting the creators of, but um, I actually got to play Kingdom Death Monster. Okay, yeah. I got to see it in person more so, because that's what it felt like. That is a gigantic box. Yes, it is. All right, I own Cthulhu Wars, which is, you know, big. You could probably knock someone out with it. Kingdom Death Monster, that's instant death. If you hit someone in the head with it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, me and these uh, random individuals, I ended up coming into the game and joining up. I got to play as a space marine because I ran out of miniatures. All right. It didn't help me, though. I couldn't use my gun. No, no, just like everyone else in that game. Yeah. You come into the world naked, naked and screaming. Naked and afraid and surrounded by... Oh, and you're fighting a lion. Yeah. Uh, though the game did lose me because I didn't get to punch the lion's testicles off. Yeah, that went the to guy, somebody else. The guy sitting next to me got to do it, and I was really upset because I wanted to do it. Uh, I felt like a kid on Halloween who was like out with their friends, and your one friend just ran ahead of you and just rang the doorbell to the house when you really wanted to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that is a game uh, where you fight terrible monsters, and uh, then you build a civilization, and you alternate back and forth between the two. The funny thing about it, though, is that you know the miniatures had a lot of controversy to them because you know they're kind of gross at times. Yes, they are. <laughs> There's uh there's, there's a one monster that's just big made piles up. of genitalia with breasts coming out. It's of them. just it's just a bunch of giant boobs. Yeah, <laughs> that eats people. Yeah, I can, we have a audience member here. <laughs> he's, he's like, all right. From, all from right. what I take, he's never heard of Kingdom Death Monster. I have not. It's a four hundred dollar boutique horror game that's unfortunately very difficult to get a hold of because it prints very limitedly because the miniatures are incredibly detailed. Yeah, I, I can't see it as being something that they ever make a profit on. They just put it out there. Yeah, like the guy, like they just did uh, I remember when they did the um, second Kickstarter and that got funded in like less than an hour, if not more, and you wouldn't get the full game until 2018. Now here's the cool <laughs> thing about that game. Once you punch the lion's testicles off you then get the opportunity to craft it into something useful. The testicles. Yes, yeah. you can use it to make, just recently punched off. make well, weapons, make clothing. You start off naked, and then you've got to build a civilization. You're wearing like a robe, but, you know. No. No. Kingdom Death Monster. Well, clearly you'd have to make clothing out of this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. testicles. Well, the funny thing about it, though, is that um, the poor person who punched the lion's dick off, you know, what, you know how a lion responds to getting its testicles and its dick punched off? Probably not well. Oh, it, it targets you specifically. Yeah. So in a way, I'm kind of glad because I'm standing next to this guy and the lion just goes for him and just knocks him down and, yeah, it got kind of dirty from there. I'm not really surprised by that. I no. Up gameplay, though. I mean, it was fun. I just don't know if I could ever One thing that commit. I do like about the look of that game, because, yes, the miniatures are incredibly well done. The ARP, the, um, the instruction board. manual is very The board good. is just this beautiful, simple circle with a grid on it. And it, like, abstracts out combat. 
it's really cool. Well, and the interesting thing too is if you look, I got to look, flip through the um, instruction manual. That alone is almost worth buying if you never played the game because the artwork in there. It's funny because it ranges from being genuinely horrifying, like something you'd see out of Berserk, to actually being kind of funny. Mm-hmm. Like it's the characters actually playing the game and struggling with it, and of course they're sitting around and they're towels, <laughs> whatever they, <laughs> the, whatever it qualifies as clothing. But yeah, that was really interesting. Just seeing the game actually, like physically, was very intimidating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when you get a chance. <laughs> Do a Google image search on Kingdom Death Monster and take a look at some of these miniatures. They're 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 downright bananas. Well, the funny thing about it is that the white lion, the thing you fight first, um, it's weird. Like you know, unsettling deformity is that it has human hands for paws. It's gross. It is, but then you think about it. Like, wait a minute, this is the first thing we're fighting. And then it made more sense when I looked at the rest of the bosses, because then you can fight the Slender Man as one of the expansions, you know, of the mm-hmm. Internet Legend, mm-hmm. uh, the Dung Beetle, which I haven't even researched, but that terrifies me what this game could spin that into. But it was really cool, like, uh, it was very, and there was a bunch of people playing Dark Souls the board game, which was really cool. I actually got to kind of help some people out. I'm sure I probably got some rules wrong, but I don't think anyone really knows them right now. That's fair. You gotta get in with the you know, where the strike with the iron tops is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, even though I got called a That's shill. The <laughs> yeah, well. Just trying to bring in peop, bring the gift of tabletop gaming to this place. Uh, what else was there? They had a really nice Age of Sigmar setup. Okay. They were really trying to push like it was mostly just people bringing in their stuff from home, but it was really cool to see the people trying to push miniature gaming, board gaming. They have a rentable board gaming library. That actually has kind of an interesting assortment because they actually had. Yeah, like, we'll we'll talk about that after the show though, because okay. I've got some things to say about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> but that no, was cool. Um, but anyway, we can jump right into this uh, with yeah. the Kickstarter. There um, was actually a game company there showing off their new game, and uh, I actually on a drunken Saturday night, most nights there, I got to actually try it out and. A lot of fun, and I think everyone should really keep an eye on this because one, they're a Chicago-based company. Two, the game is just genuinely really fun. It's called Robot Lab, the card game, and uh, what it is, it's basically I, it felt kind of like playing Uno, mm-hmm. but with more of an objective and a strategy to it. Because basically, the goal of the game is you um, are building a robot. Uh-huh. As you can see, the artwork is fantastic. Very yeah, it's car- real, real very goofy, Saturday like Saturday morning cartoon like. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the artwork is really great. But you start off with just the body. And then you draw cards from a deck. You always have five. And you'll have different color because you want to build your robot. Mm-hmm. It's got to be the same color arms, you know, because you have the green. You want all green. And what you can do is you're trying to build your robot before other people. You can, um, on your turn, instead of putting something on yours, let's say you have a... Uh, let's say you were playing and you were the red robot and I was the uh, blue robot. I have a green uh, arm in my hand. I can attach that to your robot, and there's only certain ways you can get rid of them. Okay. So you can kind of get in people's way. It very much so just reminded me of a more strategic Uno with much more personable artwork. Mm-hmm. I and mean, I just barely scratched the surface of how the game plays because we were just playing with three people. It was me, Shauna, and this other guy just joined in, and it got very cutthroat towards the end mm-hmm. because much like in Uno, you can throw down cards like, you know, skip... Or, uh, but in this case, it's called um, error or malfunction, where the part you just attached gets thrown to the junkyard. Nice. Or the scrap pile. So you can do a lot of fun stuff. And Sean ended up winning, but it was very close, and it was just really, I was just really impressed with it because it's another one of those games that takes a really simple concept, puts a really nice sort of like uh, a pe- like a theme to it. Mm-hmm. And the guys who actually were there advertising the game, I mean, what's his name, Adam uh, McCrimmon? I yeah. believe so. I am sorry if I totally screwed up your name. But uh, they were really cool. They were all dry- wearing lab coats. <laughs> they had some really good... They, they had all the artwork on display because if you donated a certain amount, you got, to, I believe, a print. Um, and they were just really... It was really cool to see a small game like that because it was kind of tucked away at the convention. But they had a really nice banner that drew people in and that everyone seemed to walk away with a really positive sort of uh, opinion of it. I know I did. I, I would have bought it right then and there if I they had it. <laughs> it sounds like a lot of fun. Um, I, I really like this effort 
um, for you know family friendly games that push forward the idea. Um, I mean, it even says right here, Robot Lab is a STEM inspired, yeah, color matching robot building card game. Uh, between this, between Robot Turtles, um, a lot of different games coming out that are getting the idea is to get kids interested in the STEM field, science, technology, engineering. I mean, this maps. game would definitely do it because, man, it is. Uh it was really fun to see your robot come together, and then unfortunately it was kind of frustrating when somebody would decide to just throw something down that make you lose part of it. Yep. And, and plus they have the scalable gameplay option, which is really cool because um, they actually have rules that are more advanced for normal play, or if you're just playing with younger kids who might not be interested in grabbing onto the rules right away, they have an easier mm -hmm. mode to kind of ease them into it. And it says as young as six, there are a few games that go down that low, but they're yeah. still engaging for adults to play. Well, that and all you need is a it's a, it's a deck of cards. That's yeah. it. There's literally nothing Everything else in the game. Everything else is in there, yeah. I think it's running for only 20 bucks. Like is what their retail price is going to be. So That's not bad at all. That's something super easy to buy for just, oh, hey, you, gotta, got, you know, I have family coming over or something, and I, mm -hmm. you want to play a game with them. Yeah, it's so, very cool. Yeah, this was really neat to actually try out, and the people who were um, there, very cool. I'm real. I know they already made their Kickstarter. Now I think they're just kind of yeah. It has a pre-order. Yeah, because I think now that they're actually just getting, if they mo go for stretch goals, that's about it. Plus, it's a Chicago-based company, and I love supporting local yes. game companies. And they really put together a good product, and they were really passionate when explaining it and sharing it. That's a. It's awesome. That's wonderful. Um, we're going to. I gave them our card. <laughs> um, they were much. They they didn't call me a shill, so they were much nicer than the other people. That's fair. They were like, "Oh, cool, a local game store. Yes, we'd like your card." <laughs> Felt like a big deal for once in my life. <laughs> well, everyone gets one. A one. <laughs> Thank you for tolerating me, Robot Lab people. All right, so uh, over the last week, there have been a lot of announcements um, out of Fantasy Flight having to do with games that we play here in the store. Um, so you mean all Fantasy Flight games? Yeah, we do play a lot of Fantasy Flight <laughs> here. Um, but uh, three games in particular, X-Wing Armada and Rune Wars. Um, so let's start with the X-Wing announcement. This is one I've been eagerly awaiting for more information on. Where we're getting our first real look at the TIE Aggressor expansion. So, um, why don't you go ahead, because you generally play Imperials in X-Wing. Pretty much. So when this was announced, uh, I mean, that was one of the big... I'm always excited. Sure, it's cool to see more ships being announced. Like, I know I would love to see them announce something that'll fix the X-Wing. Mm -hmm. But It looks like a modified version of the TIE Advance. I think that's what they were going for. But what's really cool about it is that it looks like it's going to kind of shake up a lot of different options. Um, not only is it a good ship in its own right, I haven't really gotten to delve too deep into the very, uh, you know, the nuances to it, but um, it looks like it's going to be our first Imperial small base ship with turrets. And that alone, to me, is very exciting because long have, especially in our recent X-Wing League, I got really sick of dealing with TLTs. Mm -hmm. Now I can make other people hate dealing with TLTs. Yeah. And uh, the biggest thing about this is the unguided rockets upgrade. Well, let's take a look at it. So, let's see. Three red dice, range one to three. Attack, focus, attack one ship. Your attack dice can be modified only by spending a focus token for its standard effect. And it takes up two slots. But here's the thing. What do you notice is not there? target lock? You don't discard it. Oh. It costs a focus. No, you need to have a focus, but it doesn't cost one. But here, but I mean, even when you use it, you know how a lot of those things, like missiles, rockets, when you fire them... The card itself you don't discard. Or you have to, yeah, you basically get rid of it. Now you can keep that. So I think this is going to be really exciting, because it's going to shake up... You could pro you'll probably see these on Punishers, Bombers... Uh -huh. I'd have to double check a lot of the details, but I'm just very excited about the possibility of this sort of having a widespread effect on making tankier sort of slow, like the bombers and whatnot, more of a threat. 
right, so. Do I, do I understand this correct, that you would need two focuses to utilize this? One to fire it, and then two to change your focus die? Well, let's see. Your attack dice can be modified only by spending a focus. So, yeah, that would be one of those cases where maybe having another ship there, like, um... So you're going to need action economy to get two focus, to double focus. Yeah, to so... To use it But it also makes it so, effect. like, nothing else can... The other player can't modify your dice. Exactly. It can only be done by your focus for your standard effect. And there are plenty right. of, uh... There are plenty of upgrade cards that'll kind of help. Like, this is one of the few cases where I can think of I'll actually use, um... I might be getting the name wrong because I have not played in a while, but I believe there's one where if you pref uh, instead of a ship performing an action, you give a you give another ship an extra action. Yeah, like there's a lot of well, cool a tiny mine link. No, but you're limited to one action. Well, they have, but I know they do have ones like I think it's a um, co-pilot or it's a wingman or something. There's a lot of different ones out there. I know you some are for focus. yeah that'll basically give you that free action where you can. Then again, think about it. This thing will be um, this thing will be a beast with the um, Kylo Ren shuttle. So we got two red, two green, four hull, one shield. Which I'm happy about because it once again kind of makes for more of a tankier ship. It's got a barrel roll, target lock, and it's only 17 points, so you could swarm them. Yeah, I mean, sign our specialist, and you can put TLTs on them, so you can essentially have sort of the bane of. How, oh. how much does TLT cost? TLT is a pretty cheap upgrade from what I remember. Let me double check here. But... I know that was actually one of the things they mentioned down here. And that... Oh, you know what? I have it right here. TLT costs six. So, yeah, I mean, it's pricey, but, I mean, considering... You can fit that on a couple of them. Well, and considering the work those can do. Yeah. Especially with tankier ships. Like, I really think the aggressor is something that I makes me really happy to be sort of an Imperial loyalist, because I love flying them, and this kind of gives us something. Because the Punisher is the closest thing I think we have to a tank, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, it's... Not that great? Sadly, no. It gets gunned down very quickly, but here you have a ship that's much more maneuverable. I didn't get to really look at its dial, but yeah, here's like one of the new ion cannons. You could do extra, and it's turrets. Yeah. So it's going to make it a much more threat. And then these are the two. All right, so we got uh, Lieutenant Kestel. Uh, when attacking, you may spend one focus token to cancel all of the defender's blank and focus results. That's one that I really like because many a time have I been on the receiving end of a someone's dice roll being all focuses, and of course that's when they have. Mm -hmm. So Lieutenant Kestel looks like he's going to be a very useful. And then, of course, the next one is... Once per round, after you perform a secondary weapon attack that does not hit, you may perform an attack with a different weapon. This is where I think stuff like the uh, up unguided rockets will come in handy. Yep. Come in handy, or even just uh, ion cannons. Mm hmm That's neat. Um, synced turret. Is this a new card? I believe so, yep. Attack one ship outside your firing arc. It's in your primary fire, you may roll a number of attack dice up to your primary weapon value. Neat. So. So you roll three, then you re-roll two on this ship. Yep. Um, I think they're really looking to shake things up for the most part. And I yeah. think kind of you get some cool diagrams kind of showing you the idea of how it works. Intensity. After you perform a boost or barrel roll action, you may assign one focus or evade token to your ship if you do flip this card. And then do they have the other side? Small ship only. At the end of your combat phase, you may spend one focus or evade to flip this card. So it's kind of a reusable... Alright. It's once again action economy. Mm-hmm. I'm going to hand things out to Smithers really quick. I will be right back. Sure. Just a moment. Get, Get in there, buddy. <laughs> Thank you for having me, folks. I'll try to keep it to the point and insightful. <laughs> um, so what are, what are your opinions? Is this your first time seeing any of this for the TIE Aggressor? Yes, it is, actually. Um, I don't play Empire as much as I probably should. But, like Vandy said, the aspect of having the turret on this is very intriguing to me as a guy that tends to try to take advantage of turrets as, as often as I can. 
Um, and that's simply because I'm n- I'm not as good a player as I would like to be. Mm-hmm. And turrets are typically easy to use um, if you don't have that experience. Sure. Uh, I, too, am not the strongest X-Wing player. Um so I know exactly what you what you mean there. Mm-hmm. I always I always play um, with ships and lists that I think look cool and would be fun, mm-hmm. as opposed to putting together a list that might actually be good for a tournament. Right. As far as tournament lists go, I have a number of them on file. As far as flying them, though, it's a whole other matter. I t- I try to tend to make lists that are fairly easy to fly um and for seasoned players that also makes them pretty easy to anticipate and and to combat and defend against um so it's basically trying to find a comfort level and this one would definitely be fairly easy to fly because of the turret factor which makes it attractive to a player of my experience do you have a particular faction you like to play are you mainly rebel imperial um I, I tend to go scum nowadays. I, I, I like scum. I started off playing a lot of Imperial, I, I, and I saw a whole bunch of lists that were making use of Rebels, so I tried to fly them for a while unsuccessfully, um, but found a nice little home with scum, which actually took a big hit taking out Dangaroo out of the mix with uh, a, a recent FAQ. Dangaroo um, was a crutch. Dangaroo was a crutch. It was a crutch that I relied heavily on and leaned heavily on, and they took it right away. But I still like flying scum. They're they're fun to fly, and that's typically my go-to now. Um, however, this does make me think that a switch over to Empire is uh, long overdue. All right. All right. Well, thanks for sitting in. No problem. Thank for Thank having you. me. <laughs> hey, look, he's still here. All right, so now we're going to switch over to another Star Wars property, the Star Wars Armada. Did I tell you that when I was at Ace and they also had the Fantasy Flight Room, and the guy I was talking to was shocked that we actually had an Armada community. That's how little respect this game gets at times. <laughs> so Fantasy Flight themselves had a had a booth there. Well, they actually had the flight flight crew, flight crew of volunteers that go to conventions and teach games. Okay, but it was cool. They had people there teaching uh, X Wing. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had people actually playing Star Wars Destiny, which was kind of a shock, and they were doing um, Pandemic Cthulhu, mm-hmm. whichever one of the Pandemic games or that, one of the many Cthulhu properties. Yep. That, that's interesting because I went to Comic Con on on Sunday. Um, to C2E2, and I was kind of given a, a cursory glance around for a f- Fantasy Flight uh, booth or tent or some sort of area. I, I guess I assumed that they would be there. I'm kind of surprised they wouldn't. Be. And they weren't Fantasy Flight themselves because they had a they had a sweet little app that told you exactly the vendors that were right. there. It, it might have been Asmodee because Asmodee owns Fantasy Flight, so there may have been an Asmodee group there. Okay. That yeah, makes sense. Boy, that I did not look up. I, I, I looked at, up Fantasy Flight specific. Right. Assuming, yeah. I, I guess I just was under the assumption that they'd have a presence there. Mm-hmm. It seemed like the kind of uh, thing that they would be at. When it I does. was at C2E2 last year, there was a few Asmodee volunteers showing games, one of which was a, a, a Fantasy Flight game. The rest were Asmodee in general. Really? Okay. Yeah. And it sounds like at this one they had mostly Fantasy Flight games and then... Uh, the Pandemic is a game from Z-Man. Okay. But since that's also owned by Asmodee. Well, I think a lot of it was people bringing in their own stuff. Because sure. the one guy I was talking to at Destiny said, like, oh, no, those are actually just two of the decks that we... There was the starter box decks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They were just kind of letting people try the game out. But it was cool to see people... Always good to see more people trying out X-Wing. Yeah, certainly. Absolutely. I mean, maybe next year. I don't know. Next year, I kind of want to bring Armada. And be, and play him and like put that down on the table and be like, "Well, who wants to try it?" That could be fun. I mean, it's one of those games that people see it, and they get very curious. I know that's kind of how we. Besides your luck of winning the raffle, we kind of you were you were on the edge of wanting to play Armada. Oh, certainly, it definitely piqued my interest right away. As a, as an avid Star Wars fan alone, I I like the idea of it, especially having the experience in X Wing. It just seemed like a more macro scale. Um, pretty much. Pretty much of that. And I was fortunate to win a raffle here. Um, I did subsequently buy the expansion, the the, uh, the starter the You starter bought pack, the core box. The core you box. Got. And uh, was quickly overwhelmed by the instructions. <laughs> you, it, it gets a little intimidating. Yeah. 
you're better off just sitting down and playing. Mm-hmm. Playing with, with Ken, somebody. yeah, easily one of the best. Uh, I mean, that's how pretty much I learned how to play, and I don't think I've ever actually looked in the instruction mm-hmm. manual at that point. Right. So you'll get it. I look forward to learning it. I I don't think it's as. I just look forward to learning the gameplay. So I yeah. start start enjoying it. Oh, the nice thing is once you get started, everything else kind of falls into place. Well, so certainly. One of the cool things with this new ship. That's right. We you rebels and imperials both get a new. Yep. This is the light carrier, the imperial light carrier expansion. You mentioned earlier, it looks kind of like a slice of pizza that shoots tie fighters out of it. I mean, it really does. More so than the predominantly triangle shaped ships that the Empire normally has, because this one has nice rounded corners. Hey, yeah, that's that's kind of my thing. Uh, this looks like you know slice of pizza with like a nice firm crust. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, so we this, gotta keep that one away from Will. That's fair. That man will <laughs> he, eat. He chips. might eat that one. All right. So it has the pursuant title, which has kind of a neat ability on it. When you reveal a command other than a squadron command, you may discard this card to resolve a squadron command. Treat this command as if you spend a squadron dial. That's so no matter good. what you do, you always have the option of making it a squadron. See, the one thing though, you gotta discard it. That means that one means yeah. one off. Yeah, that means you get rid of it entirely. If I'm re- yeah, mm-hmm. I could. I mean, then again, I think one of the key things I'm still learning about this game is that even though it says six rounds, a lo- even though it seems like a long time, it's can actually uh, having a one off ability like that could completely change the game. Especially yeah. since there's a huge demand lately for uh, nerfing squadrons. Sure. Like I've seen that on the Reddit. Um, the other. Um title is the squall so when you activate you may choose up to three unengaged friendly squadrons at close to medium range these squadrons may move up to distant two if they do they can not end their movement engaged that's kind of terrifying with uh, bombers so there's a nice little illustration of this one here showing you move them to and then you activate them Yeah, that's scary. I don't like that. <laughs> it's, I mean, bombers are already... I, I thankfully have not been on the receiving end of any bomber attacks, but this strikes me as it's going to make that a problem. Yeah. And then finally, there's the stronghold. When a friendly squadron with swarm at distance 1 to 2 is defending, the attack is treated as obstructed. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> As a rebel player, this bothers you. A little bit. Swarm is already a massive pain to deal with. So something that's going to make it even harder to snipe things and kill them. Mm-hmm. God, yeah, I can see that being very frustrating to deal with. Yeah, that gets real gross. That gets real gross because you're just protecting all your TIE fighters. But I know we're getting something that... uh I know what we're getting. <laughs> Hammerheads. Admiral Sloan. When a friendly squadron without rogue is attacking, you may spend one die with the special icon. That's the negate icon. Negate That's icon. What I call it. Uh, to choose and spend one of the defender's defense tokens. While attacking a ship, it may also re-roll one die with a crit icon. It's not bad. Very squadron heavy. Then we have... Uh, That's 24 points. That's an expensive upgrade. Well, she's a, um, what do you call it, a commander, right? I believe so. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm terrible with a lot of these, uh, remembering a lot of these commanders. And boarding troopers. When you reveal a command, you may discard a squadron dial or token and, and this card to choose one enemy ship at close range. Choose and spend a number of its defense tokens up to your squadron value. Jeez. Yeah. So, I mean, this is this is an all-out assault support ship. Which is kind of crazy considering how much of uh, the Gladiator is sort of... The one that's shaped like a kunai also kind of mm-hmm. isn't as much of a threat. This one actually seems like it's going to be kind of, kind of spooky. So we have the Quasar Fire uh, 1 class cruiser carrier. It has a 2 command, 4 squadron, 2 engineering. Looks like it's throwing all blues. That's scary to me that at range one, that at speed one, it has two. Yeah. Is that common? It can turn pretty nice. I don't think it's that I, common. I mean, it doesn't seem very common to me. 
And it's a ship that costs 54 points. Throws nothing but blue dice, so I can see it being a pretty mm -hmm. pretty solid flanker. Now we have the Quasar Fire 2 class cruiser. And this is a combo of red and blue. Um, this was 61 points. A little more expensive. It has a longer range. Oh yeah, it seems a little bit more like it can pelt some ships. Um, however, this is the kind of thing that is an early target for super aggressive rebel crashy ships. But you know what's kind of scary about this? Hmm. It's anti-squadron armament is red. It is. That's why you send some hammerheads after it, yeah. knock it out of the sky before it has a chance. Like, I'm just thinking that strikes me as it can get really annoying really fast because, I mean, one red die, that can put a serious dent in a squadron. Mm hmm. There's a dog outside. Lots of dogs outside. <laughs> we have disposable capacitors. Oh, doggos. When you activate, you may discard this card. If you do, the blue dice on your battery armament can be used while attacking ships at close long range until the end of the round. So you could use a blue to attack in a red area. Um, and then we've got... What else do we have? The Grand, oh God, they the threw Grand in the Inquisitor. Inquisitor. When an enemy ship at distance 1 to 5 changes its speed, you may exhaust this card to increase or decrease your speed by 1. So he is coming after you. That's pretty cool, too. Man. You know, I really didn't and think that Only ship, four points. Yeah, I really didn't... I didn't give much credit to the Quasar. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, that just seems nasty. Let's get out of there, man. So there's... It's a very maneuverable ship. That's very cool. I am enjoying what I'm seeing so far with that one. Yeah, I mean, I've been eyeballing getting into Imperials eventually. Yep, one second. Yeah, roar. Just one second. It appears we are having a slight technical difficulty, if you can still even hear me. There we go, back on top. All right. So, what do we got here? Uh, now let's switch over uh, to Rune Wars. We had um, an announcement that I... Yeah, the expansions did come out, the, the first wave of expansions. So we do have, currently in store, we have the command uh, units command for the Y-Car and the Dokken Lords. We have more cavalry for the Dokken Lords and more archers for the Y car. Um, Easy way to kind of build up your forces. Mm -hmm. And we are going to be doing unboxing videos for all of those as well in the near future. Um, they're real neat. Uh, the upgrades in there are a lot of fun. Yeah. Getting a nice little, you know, a cheaper Necromancer before we get the big hero Necromancer later is fun. I mean, I can't wait to get that guy. You've got that terrifying skeleton drummer. I, I really like the skeleton drummer. Like, I almost want to get, like, a bunch of them so I can just have one with, like, five but, drums around them. But now we have Skeleton Cavalry. We have Black Knights. Death Knights, rather. Yeah. Get it right. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, these guys are fast. They are very fast. Yeah, I know what it's like to be on the receiving end of Cavalry Strikes. So let's take a look at what we got here. They have Impact based on Stable Energy. Okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I got to... I don't know, I almost kind of don't like the... I wish they had a better way instead of having to flip those coins. <laughs> you know, I, I can understand that. Yeah. Um, at the same time, in terms of the variety of what's going on there, you've got, what, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, so that's 4, 8, um, times 2 is 16 times 2. Yeah, so you would need, like, a 32-sided die that has enough information to tell you all of yeah. the different things that it is. Uh, I guess my problem is every time I think I'm rolling them, they just bounce off the table. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Um, oh, look at this. Well defending, subtract a, a mortal blow. Good. Uh, you get uh, So you can be giving up to two panic tokens, minimum one. 
and steadfast so while you are suffering a morale test treat fear cards as having one additional morale token i really like so that they're hard to yeah. scare <laughs> not only that they're attacks you can't spook the dead you've got two reds and a blue you heard me I heard. Yeah, that's fine. I figure it's a dog. Who doesn't love dogs? Two trays. <laughs> Two trays is 24 points. Six trays is 55. That's not bad at all. No, especially and for look, how annoying cavalry are. By the time you get four trays, you've got this here, which allows you to add in uh, that necromancer hero that we're going to be getting Right, soon. the crazy one riding the, what, the wave of just ethereal... Just a bunch of bones. Yeah. Bones and, and, and magic. Bones and energy. Um, I'm excited about these guys, though, because, I mean, in Age of Sigmar, I got a lot of crap for running Black Knights, and these guys look like a much more threatening version of them. So we have a lot of mobility here. Damn Check right. this out. They have a two at five and at nine, so you could decide when you want to move. That's really that's going to be really good for setting traps for charging. You get a charge plus one, oh. so you get to so move it becomes farther. A three. Yes. So you can really psych somebody out, and that's one thing I've noticed about this game that really makes it similar to War Machine, because mm -hmm. in War Machine a big key is getting the uh, charge off. Yeah. But what I like about Rune Wars is that it kind of makes that more of a you got all these measures of movement, and you got to move. Yep. And I like the fact that these well, guys... Well, here, you, you'll move forward three, and then rotate. Yeah. I'm really... Reform. That's, I, I'm that's really exciting. excited to see what these you guys are You can add a free up. mortal wound. I'm excited that these guys are so deadly in close combat. It's, it's really scary, actually. Yeah, I know. I'm happy. I'm pretty happy being on the receiving end of this, because uh, I hate your hero. It doesn't look like there are any other upgrade cards they're showing off yet. This is just an announcement. I mean, who, so, what, what more do we need? <laughs> I can't make that out. Yeah, I can't either. Something tactics. Is there a link in here somewhere? Oh, I know how to find it. I'll just do this. Uh, ba -ba, ba -ba. We have, I mean, they look great. Too. I love the antlers. I, uh, how they really, uh, really stick into those guns. Um, and then the other one that got announced today is more info on the Latari Elves expansion. Yeah, when are these guys supposed to be dropping? Quarter three. Okay. So one thing, I kind of wish they would... I mean, I get what they're doing, but I also want to see more people play the game, and I know a lot of people are waiting. Yeah, there are people who are waiting for the Elves. Uh, I mean, they are releasing them in a very smart way. Yeah. Like, it definitely doesn't feel like... You don't like want to overwhelm people right in the beginning. Right. Um, but let's see what we have here. So this is their hero. She's riding a big gnarly wolf. What's her name? Um, I just saw her name here somewhere. Eliana of Summersong? Yes, Eliana of Summersong. She's riding an awesome wolf. She's got a sword. I mean, she looks like she knows, she, she knows what she's doing. Um, Mobile. Yes. Very, uh... I mean, these being white, so you could put them on anything. I think what's more interesting is the fact that you can do the shift action based on the number of uh, runes. Yes. Like, that could strike me as yep. depending after, on... After moving four, you then shift. So sh she is jumping around. Um, yeah, this is at that blue defense... That and the reform being a white is something I don't think we've seen much of, if at all. No, no, that's real exciting to see. So she's very uh, maneuverable. Uh, let's see, her uh, deployment ability is, after deployment you may remove one allied unit of Lanix riders from the play area, then redeploy that unit. Kind of lets you adjust on the fly, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. She, uh, as fact, an attack, too. you can add... Mortal wounds. Mortal always. wounds. <laughs> And then once per game for lightning, you can add a regular wound. Not I bad. I feel like that should be flipped, but whatever. Um, impact 2 and Precise 1. Uh, that a white and Yeah, blue. she's around all three Whoa. of the dice, so... At, at 33 points. Not bad at all. I mean... That's neat. Yeah, the elves look like they're going to definitely shake up the game. Mm-hmm. I really want to know more about the... Uh, yeah, and the fact that she can charge while shifting. Yeah, that's... That's cool. Sh sideways. 
Wow. So she can, like, drift into... Yeah. That is terrifying. That's really terrifying. Um, all right, so the pack leader spear. Let's see what she's got. You may exhaust this card to gain lethal three. That's right. This is the ability you were reading into. That. Lethal three for this attack. If this card is exhausted after an enemy engaged with you is destroyed, ready this card. This card cannot be readied otherwise. So lethal. Um, that was it's adding wounds after it's been multiplied. I think you can. <laughs> I it's mean, it's it's a new it's yeah, a new mechanic to bring out. There's the nothing else that has. So we this haven't had a lot right of experience now. with it, uh, but that's pretty neat. Um, Fantasy Flight wants to give us some early stuff. We see, we have Wild on. Call's <laughs> Instinct. Um, you know, it's worth a shot. <laughs> when you perform a march or a shift, you may treat it as modified um, with a turn. Yeah, it seems like mobility is really going to be their key thing. Mm -hmm. That is like what hit, I am gathering. Like hit and run. Um, and then what do we have here? Ambush Predator. Enemy range attacks cannot target you. Yeah, I don't like that. If this is your first um, melee attack, gain lethal X, where X is the current round, then discard this card. So the longer you wait to do your first melee attack, the more deadly that attack is. Yeah. And you can't be attacked by range. Yeah, I don't like that you can't be attacked by range. That, uh... Doesn't seem so she's right. She's dancing around. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, but <laughs> I don't like it. on the plus side, those three cards that we just showed are all the same upgrade type. So she could only choose one of these: Wild Calls Instinct, Ambush Predator, um, and oh, the Spear. Yeah, oh, those two. Sorry, those two. I thought there was a third one. Oh, the Spear. Yes. Spear, yeah. ah. No, that's a different one. Okay, oh, so she gets this and one of the and one of these two. All right, that's pretty cool. Seems legit. <laughs> Scary. Um, nah, I'm, this makes me wonder what the Athukulan is going to be like. Yeah, I can't wait till we actually get some information about that. Because um, you're right, I really want to see them. Well, that and you know the Dakan seem to be the most balanced race. The Y car seem to be focused mostly on whoops, the Daisy. You know, overwhelming and blight and poison. These guys seem to be focused on mobility. Mm -hmm. So that kind of makes me wonder if the Athukulan are just going to mostly be just crush. Kill. I mean, that's <laughs> not a bad guess. That's not a bad guess at all. It's just one big unit. And uh, That's it. bear with us here while I'm trying to fix this. I don't know why the computer's acting up as much as it is this Technology week. Technology sucks. Yeah. If you couldn't notice, we are having technical difficulties that could be solved. But only with your help. <laughs> yeah, let's switch this camera over. There we go. All right, so as, as you may have heard, we are launching our <laughs> Patreon page. Um, we're going to be getting that up this next week. Um, we just have a few more things we still need to put on there, but then we'll have links available. It'll be up on our Facebook page. Well, as we well want as it website. to be quality. Yeah. You see too many half-assed Patreons go up, and, I mean, who wants to give their money mm -hmm. to something where it's going to seem like just two guys sitting in front of a camera talking? No, we'll have three in ours. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Special um, guests. Uh, we'll get into more information as we have that on there. We'll, we're also going to be launching um, our online store uh, so that people who aren't in the area that end up seeing this, um, if they'd like to support our store, they'd be able to buy games directly from us. Um, so that is uh, something that I've been working on this past week. You've been pretty busy, which is good. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited to see the online store take off because you know, we appreciate all the help support we can get yeah absolutely um so why don't we close up with uh our pitch segment see if uh smithers here would like to give it a shot okay smithers here's the thing we're in a we're in an elevator mm -hmm. i'm a wealthy business executive for a game company mm -hmm. you have 15 seconds to pitch me an idea for a game what is it 15 seconds. 
pitch you an idea for yeah. Ten seconds now, man. No, we're not really on a time limit, but that just kind of <clears throat> scares you. So whether can... whether it's an idea for a theme or a mechanic you'd like to see, just kind of throw it up there, and then we'll just kind of quickly go back and forth. And work Smithers is a real person. Like we we aren't just talking. <laughs> Come join us. We're friendly. <laughs> Hello, world. Let's make sure. Just is there, okay, there we go. It takes some time. Oh, are you? You're not Snows. a ghost. 15 seconds. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. Time <laughs> okay. is what I tell Oh, thank God. Thank God. Uh, I'm having a little bit of writer's block here. You kind of you uh, took mean, me by surprise uh, you play here. My key pointed you out. That's I mean. fair. I did point you out. Uh, so a basic uh, rundown, a few yeah. things that we've done in the past. Okay. Um, we've talked about an asymmetrical game where you have two groups of people essentially playing their own game but mm -hmm. are connected. Brian put the kibosh on it because he didn't like Black Friday being the theme. Yeah, the idea was you have one group of the shoppers, the other group are the store owners, and they play differently trying to meet their own goals. Okay. Um, what, what's another one that we've done? Ratification. Ratification. That was in the same one. Was that in the same episode? Yeah, because that's the, uh, you have the House well, and the Senate trying to pass a law. We did pitch that idea for a game based <laughs> on John Carpenter's classic sci-fi movie, The Thing, and then, you know, a day later, Mondo decided to announce, oh, hey, we have a Thing game coming out. That so, works very you know, similarly to how Andy was describing it should work. Yeah, it, was, it, it made me really paranoid. Like, I wore tinfoil. On my head that night. Uh, I, I do like the premise of the asymmetrical game. Um, I like I, like I, we were talking about earlier. I just played Mansions of Madness, and once you go insane, you mm -hmm. get these different cards where you could only win by some of the cards, some of the traits of these cards. Whereas you could only win by doing something. If your group won, if your group won and beat the Mansion of Madness, you had to carry out a specific set of criteria for you to actually win. As one of the players, it was it was a really weird dynamic. So you're you're kind of all pointed in the same direction, but you had different criteria that you had to meet to actually right. win the game. Yeah, that's that idea I do dig and could get behind. Well, what's like a theme or a setting? You'd think that kind of like that sort of idea would work in. Like interesting. Um, Space is overdone, and I'm not sure that dynamic works in space per se. Um, That's fair. Because basically you're talking about where one person's basically... You're all kind of on the same path, but so right. everyone has like a different... A different agenda, yeah. really. Mm -hmm. um, Battlestar Galactica is a game that has that kind of idea to it. Um, Bears beats Battlestar Galactica. Um, Bears beats... Don't, don't worry about him. Okay. Stay on topic here. <laughs> okay. pay, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. All right. It's not behind um. the curtain. He's sitting right there. <laughs> but now that he said beats, I'm kind of focused solely on how beats comes into play. And oh, bears. Bears. You know what? You got a great idea. You're a bunch of bears. All right. You got to steal someone's picnic basket. Okay. Everyone wants something particularly out of that basket. But what? Okay, okay, your bears. There is one picnic basket for everybody. Yeah. So is this one of those, one person runs in and it's making like a little piano noise as they're running and they grab the picnic basket. Somebody else runs past them and grabs the picnic basket. And it's just that. Yeah. Okay. It's a dungeon crawl. Kind <laughs> of, but I was thinking like you could have like, you know, some sort of like stuck up ranger always getting in your way and keeping you from getting the picnic basket and you could like... Pawn it up. You can pawn off responsibility on someone else in your group. Wasn't Perhaps. There, uh, wasn't there a movie move. like this with yeah. T.J. Miller in it? Was there? I, I never saw it. They tried to take Jellystone. It was kind of a big deal at the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they got out of it. Um, oh, I was <laughs> I just Dan talking. Was in it too. I'm sorry. Spoiler alert. They got out of it. I was just talking today about a game that I'd like to see at least theme-wise. What is uh, it? You know how Huckleberry Hound? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, less Hanna Barbera. Okay. Um, <laughs> You know, um, we, we've talked before about how we like the idea of a nautical-themed miniature game, but they're kind of boring, because there's... Uh, I don't know, I've never played enough to really have an opinion there's, on that. The, you look at the board, and there's not a whole lot going on because of the scale that it needs to be at. And the mm -hmm. open ocean is just kind of, there's nothing there. That's why you got to inhabit it with sea monsters. So what it's if... Certainly at different depths, you could inhabit it with certain... 
creatures, yeah. prehistoric, real world. I mean, made up, mm-hmm. sure. fictitious. Wow, he really laid that out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what if what if you had one where instead of like giant capital ships, all right, you're zipping around in speedboats. Are you playing as pirates? No. Well, like maybe modern day pirates. Kinda. The idea. The idea. It's it's speedboats set in 1980s Miami. Okay. All right. So you've got you've got the drug smugglers versus the police. Okay. So basically, right. now we have to be careful because this sounds like a. <laughs> Sounds like a certain fictitious property that might be scooped up sooner or later for a board game. Yogi Bear. <laughs> and I'm what sure it's Yogi every Bear? John what Woo is... movie ever yeah. created. Hardboiled didn't have anything to do with that. Hardboiled had everything to do with Chai. You could have shoehorn a boat chase in a... There was no boat chase. There was a shootout on a boat, but there was no chase. Okay. In which one? Hardboiled. The yeah. greatest action movie ever made. Yeah. It's uh, uh, Face Off uh, did face, have a boat chase. Face Off had boat chases. I don't care for that movie. Interesting. That is un-American. I have, sir. A, I have a hard time taking any movie seriously with Nicolas Cage in it. Ever or just recently? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Uh, no, Raising Arizona was great. Agreed. Um, but yeah, every other movie like uh, Con Air, not a fan. It's not a very good movie. The Rock, eh. hate it. Yeah, I mean, I love yeah. Sean Connery, but uh, what about uh, what about uh, Moonstruck? That's that's oh, young that? Nick Cage, which share <laughs> yeah. Moonstruck. Wow, I, I never heard of this movie. Oh yeah, it's, 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 it's an eighties classic. Gets, he gets his hand sliced off in a meat slicer. It's before the movie though, so okay. he has a prosthetic hand. Oh, we don't actually get to see his acting prowess on yeah on losing his hand. No, but if you haven't done so, do yourself a favor and look up the the video of like I believe it's like fifteen minutes of Nick Cage freakouts. It's a super clip just filled with Isn't that every just- scene. Isn't Nick that, Cage acting? Isn't that just the end of The Wicker Man? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Not the bees. <laughs> I mean, am I wrong here? Uh, this is such a disappointing movie because I loved the original Wicker Man. Oh, yeah, the original is like a seminal classic. Yeah. One of the most brutal endings, I think. All right, history. all right. So wait, here's the thing. Hang on. I know what you're thinking. Yeah. Two steps ahead. Yeah. Of a game where you play as various incarnations of Nicolas Cage. All right. Boom. And Nailed you're all it. going for the Oscar. Yeah, but see, that's a goal that nobody's ever going to acquire. I mean, that's an unwinnable game. Nobody wants to play an unwinnable see, the, game. The, the, see, but the thing is, at the end of the game... Did he get an Oscar for the... Uh, Tom, does he really? For leaving Las Vegas? Is that, is that true? I don't know. <laughs> I'm no expert in yeah. it. Or was he just nominated? But no, but no, okay. It okay. is my hope uh, that Nick uh, Cage was just nominated. So here's the thing. I got an idea. This is perfect. So you're talking about games with different agendas. Mm-hmm. A game where everyone's playing as various incarnations of Nicolas Cage mm-hmm. from all of his movies. So you can have one where it's Ghost, uh, Ghost Rider. Another one where it's the dad from Drive Angry, who was basically Ghost Rider. And mm-hmm. then you can have the guy from National Treasure, who is basically the guy from Knowing. Benjamin Gates, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. yeah. And you're all trying to accomplish that movie's particular mm-hmm. goal. But you're also trying to sabotage one another, because there can only be one true Nick Cage. I do like the sabotage element. Gone in 60 seconds, you're trying to steal a bunch of cars, but uh, what was the movie Matches that come in about? Had about conning people. Yeah, conning that's people. con. And then uh, you're trying the, to con the daughter had the long con going on. Yeah, like you know, come on. There's it's an asymmetrical game where everyone's Nick Cage and you're mm-hmm. all out for number one. Nick Cage. Yeah, Nick Cage trying to get his face back all game long. <laughs> exactly. all, all he's trying yeah. to do is get his face back. Exactly. You got to hunt down John John Travolta. All right, I dig that. I could get behind. I don't know Nick what Cage the board game. would look like. It would probably look like an insane. Probably a mess. You'd have like a. You'd have like a like a, like a, like a natural history. You'd have like a museum in the middle, and man, the continental United <laughs> States. <laughs> I'm thinking like because Nick wow. Cage spans the you know. Man, you could really go anywhere with this. Sure could. Get Nicolas Cage on the phone. Nicolas Cage. I thought you actually were won best that. actor in 1995 for Leaving Las Vegas. Okay, so it is an attainable goal apparently. Yeah. Huh. For that one particular movie but, about horrific alcoholism. Mm-hmm. But come on, you can have that asymmetrical feeling where everyone's out for themselves but trying to sabotage one another. Yeah. I would almost prefer a Nick Cage versus Jeff Goldblum themed game. Why would they fight? Why wouldn't they fight? <laughs> no, if we're going to have Jeff Goldblum in a game, we need it to be him and Ed Bagley Jr. teaming up. So you can't even disagree with that. <laughs> I'm trying to find a flaw in your plan and your logic, and, and there's it's no... Airtight. 
there, there's no flaw to be had. I you, go, like... you can go and take that thing in a submarine and you'd be fine. So at this point, I feel like we've gotten very much off track. No, we're Slightly. all talking about game ideas. All right. All right. See, because now, now in my mind, all I can picture is Jeff, Go no, Jeff Goldblum and Ed Begley Jr. playing Guess Who. <laughs> <laughs> who? Now, wait a minute. Here's my question. What if we did Face Off Guess Who? You have to guess. <laughs> we're, no, well, guess who, who took whose face? Yeah, you have to guess which one's the actual plant. Yeah. yeah. Interesting premise. You would also possibly need sliders to change faces on the board prior to flipping <laughs> them down. Yeah, it's like a rule. You have to do this. Yeah. Piece. God, what an awful movie. <laughs> I'm sorry. Debatable. There's a lot of other movies I'd rather watch. That's fair. I guess that's where that kind of lands for me. Then again, it was always on the break room at Best Buy for some reason. Mm -hmm. it just That's weird. It was really weird. That's Every weird time I'd go on lunch room. or I'd go into the break room, and Face Off would be on. I'd be like, why is this always on? Ultimately, I believe what we're saying is, <laughs> Nick Cage, call us. We got ideas. Call us. We're idea men. That's I mean, what we do. I know about your hidden island, Nick Cage. <laughs> I know all about it. He did an interview with Fangoria. And there's a hidden island? He does. Um, I hear it's like the island of Dr. Moreau. Well, <laughs> how about this? After the stream is done, I'll tell you guys all about Busta Rhymes Island. Why? Okay. Why, why isn't that a chance? <laughs> <laughs> and it might be. All right. So I think we're going to call it there for this week. I'm fresh out of ideas. We're going right. to Nicholas Cage. Thank God. All right. Well, thanks but for wait. watching. Nope. <laughs> Raising Arizona, the board game. That's actually kind of neat, where you kidnap <laughs> the kids. You gotta kidnap the kids, and you gotta escape from the cops while you're getting diapers. Sounds like a legendary game to me. <laughs> Worked for Big Trouble in Little China. Sure it did. <laughs> a game that has different phases, one that has to do with robbing, one that has to do with raising children, one that has to do with surviving prison. And one prison. player plays as the bounty hunter. Alright. Okay, agreed. Alright. 